In this video we want to look at graphing another parabolic function. We know that this is going to be in the shape of a parabola and we get that right here from the exponent of 2. This tells me that it will be parabolic. So since we know it's parabolic let's go ahead and figure out how we are shifting things up, down, left, and right. Now just by looking at what we have here on the inside we do the opposite of this guy and we move horizontally. So even though it looks like a positive 3, it's actually going to be a negative 3. So that means we're going to move to the left 3 units. And then we look at the number that's at the very end. This negative 4 that is not attached at all to the square tells, tells me how I move up and down. So I'm going to do exactly what I see. So I'm going to go down 4 units. All right, well, let's go ahead and start there, start with what we do have. Now, our, our vertex would normally be here at the origin. But according to what I've been able to figure out from this function, I've gone left three and down four units. So move to the left three and then down four units. So here is your vertex at the coordinates negative three, negative four. Now since this is a parabola, we know that one of the things that can help us out here is the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is this imaginary vertical line that runs right through the vertex. It's going to act, act as a mirror. Whatever you see on one side, you can reflect that onto the other side of the axis of symmetry. So, right now we've taken care of the ships moving left 3 and down 4. But it's this one half here that can cause us problems. This scalar multiple is going to give us a compression. Okay, That means a compression in the y direction. We're going to be scrunching this guy down a little bit. The, per the basic parabolic shape that we're used to is not going to be looking like this. It's going to be opening a little bit wider. So if we look at this as being one half x squared, and if we remember our order of operations, we shouldn't have a problem with this. Remember that with the order of operations, you would do your exponents first, and then you do any multiplication next, at least in terms of the only things that I have going on here. So we should remember how our points on the graph work since this is a parabola. From the vertex, if I go out one, I would square that to go up one, except now I've got this one half here. So when I go out one squared is one, I then have to multiply times a half. If you'd rather look at it as dividing by two, you can do that too. It's going to be the same thing. Two squared would be four, but then half of four is two. Three squared is nine. Half of nine is four and a half. So you see we're not going up nine anymore. We're only going up half of that, so four and a half. Four squared would be 16, and half of 16 would be eight. If I went out here five units, I'd square that to get 25, and then half of 25 would be 12 and a half. So that's gonna take me way up off this graph, and I'm not gonna be able to fit that on here. Now since I do have my axis of symmetry, I'm going to reflect these points back over here. So there's where I, where I went up one half, two, four and a half, and eight. So you can see that this parabola is not as steep as the normal ones. It's compressed ever so slightly. So now we just want to sketch our parabola. Now this is not something that I expect you guys to be able to do right at the very beginning. But I do expect you guys to practice this so that you can have nice, smooth curves. Okay. Make sure that you do take your graphs all the way to the edge. Put your arrows to indicate that you do go on forever in both directions. And you get your parabola. Remember, we shifted to the left three, down four, and we had this vertical compression of one half.